Now Sports with Sports Director Paul Gerke. In what is probably his magnum opus, LL Cool J began the track Mama Said Knock You Out with the classic line, Don't Call It a Comeback. What does this have to do with sports? Well, not much, but despite what LL tells you, the Hawks' rally last night can definitely be called a comeback. I was just telling them that you and I are very close friends. <laughs> you have cried in front of me and I, you. Uh, we talk every Monday. Yes. I mostly listen because I'm a good friend. <laughs> it's wonderful to see you. Yes, you too. Ron. Plenty of NCAA tournament pools are just won by people picking the better mascot. The Broncos? Pretty self-explanatory, but the Explorers were actually named the Explorers by mistake. No, not that bad of a mistake. A Philadelphia sports writer thought the school's name was in reference to French explorer Sierre de La Salle, when in actuality, La Salle is an homage to Jean-Baptiste La Salle, the patron saint of teachers. Stupid sports writers. The Boise State football team seems pretty happy to be here in Seattle, and it's not just because of this giant statue of a man with a hammer. Over the course of eight months leading up to the Boise State Washington opener, the Broncos tried to downplay the importance of a rematch of last year's Mako Bowl. And Saturday night, we found out why. California and Idaho are two of the country's top two dairy producing states, so why not milk that fact for all it's worth? That's what the Bronco and Bulldog Dairy Boosters did in 2005 for the first milk can game. In yesterday's press conference, Coach Pete read the minds of all of Bronco Nation when he said that this year has had a different feel to it. As odd as it's been without the high scoring affairs of Broncos past, some things have stayed the same, like a postseason win in Las Vegas. Ribs. <laughs> I had ribs for lunch. That's why I'm doing this. Oh, hello there. The Associated Press released its preseason basketball poll today, and Boise State is not on it. 60 rally car drivers from all across the country are racing in Idaho City this weekend. Before the tires officially hit the gravel, however, Idaho Rally International was kind enough to offer a ride-along preview of the course, so I decided to risk life and limb for a chance to see the stage firsthand. 36 miles northeast of Boise, nestled in the mountains along Highway 21, lies Idaho City, population 484. There's something to be said for small town living, the familiarity with one's neighbors, the simplicity, the peace and quiet. Well, maybe not so much. This weekend, Idaho City will host a stage of the United States Rally Championship. In preparation for the event, three drivers offered ride-alongs on the gravel course in the Boise National Forest. My driver, Dick Rockroar, the director of the Idaho Rally Group. Dick used to race motorcycles, but then... Yeah, I got old. <laughs> it's easier to go fast and not be as in good a shape as it is on a bike. Dick told me he topped over 120 miles per hour in previous races. I left my wallet in the car so they can't identify my course. After he graciously helped me put on my helmet, I began to prepare for my inevitable dirt track death. Dick just said he hasn't rolled this car. Well, if you keep it on the road, you don't see much damage at all. <laughs> but if you run it off, there's trees and rocks and all those good things. The passenger harness in Dick's car is custom built and not custom built for me. That's going to be a nice tight squeeze. Mm, yeah, well, you're slightly bigger than my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a lady by the time I get out of here. For the first 30 seconds of the ride, I felt like there was a significant chance of sustaining serious bodily harm. I did eventually get comfortable, about as comfortable as one can be wearing a tight harness and knowing there's a good reason for the fire extinguisher under your seat. And then, just like that, the ride was over. It only lasted a couple of minutes, but the terror Mr. Rock Roar instilled in me will last a lifetime. How many times have you run that course? Uh, I've just driven it with the regular car. <laughs> On the court, Boise State forward Anthony Drimmick can do it all. He can score off the dribble, he can shoot the three, he can defend. But this offseason, Drimmick was ripped from his comfort zone and forced to face adversity off the floor as a near tragedy turned his world upside down. I was heartbroken for him. Anthony Drimmick! In early August, Anthony Drimmick and his girlfriend Jenna paid a visit to the Idaho Humane Society. It was kind of she wanted a cat to hang out with when she was over kind of thing, but I mean, I wanted it as well. Had to get one, couldn't leave without taking one. 
That's when Anthony first laid eyes on Jax. He was in one of the cages, and I don't know, he was just really cute, and he um, got really attached to us really quickly, so we are like, all right, let's get this one. Jax became part of the family. Simba! Sharing an apartment with Drimmick and fellow Bronco basketball player Iggy Hadziomerovic. Nearly two weeks of kitty cat bliss. Dude, chill. Until Iggy was entrusted to look after the fuzzy feline. I left the door unlocked. And then someone went in there and the cat ran out. I went back to the apartment about an hour later. I looked around, couldn't find it anywhere. A careless roommate, a curious kitty, and a disaster waiting to happen. Anthony was pretty tight with that cat. I was like, oh no, I hope it doesn't divide our team. After a brief search, Hadzio Marovic began to panic. And then a light bulb went off. And I thought it was a good idea maybe to get a replacement cat. And it turned into the Brady Bunch where he went down to the pet store and got a fake cat that supposedly looks something alike the lost cat. I went before he got back, just looked at a few cats, kind of tried to pick out the same one. Drimmick returned home and wasn't fooled. Yeah, it was significantly smaller, so. Angry with his roommate and desperate to reunite with his lost love, Drimmick began to wrestle with feelings of guilt. Me and my girlfriend were stressing, like, oh no, we lost the cat. Like, what are we going to do? I'm a good cat parent. It's him. It's not my fault. It was then that Anthony took to the internet. He flooded Twitter with pleas for help. Search parties were assembled, and Bronco fans took to the streets to track down Jax. We got really nervous because um, that was the day of the giant storm. We thought he was still out there, but actually he was just being fat and lazy in some lady's house. I'm kind of moving up into the crazy old cat lady stage right now. Enter Julie Hutchinson. Self-professed cat fanatic and Jax's guardian angel. It was about 11, 15 at night. I was driving home from St. Luke's and I noticed as I got to the intersection by the stadium there, something little, some little animal going in and out of traffic. And I'm like the cat whisperer. So I, I pulled over into the parking lot and little kitty was running around. So I got him to come over to me. Hutchinson kept Jax safe overnight. Come here now, give me a kiss. And returned him to his rightful owners after seeing an ad on Craigslist. We were very happy that we found out Jax was safe and sound. Anthony must really love that cat, but I think he loves his girlfriend a little more. Anthony and Jenna, happy. Iggy, absolved of his crime. Basketball season, saved. And a lesson learned. Don't leave the cat alone with Iggy anymore. In case you're wondering what became of the imposter cat, after living with Iggy and Anthony for a while, he was given away to a good home. Drew McNearly had to get rid of Jax too because he thought he had a cat allergy, but now he's taking some medication and Jax is there to stay. Back live at Bulldog Stadium here in Fresno, we're less than 24 hours away from kickoff between Boise State and Fresno State. This will be Derek Carr's third attempt at beating Boise State as a starting quarterback here for the Bulldogs. He and Coach Peterson have developed a sort of special relationship despite the fact that they hang out on opposite sidelines. He's one of the better quarterbacks in the country without question. He's one of the best coaches you know, to ever you know, be around in college football. In another universe, perhaps Carr and Peterson could have taken that mutual respect to another level by teaming up. Fresno State was one of three schools to offer Carr a scholarship in his junior year of high school. Boise State was not, but that doesn't mean Pete wasn't interested. He was in Texas as a junior when we were looking at him, and then he transferred, you know, and then uh, he chose Fresno. It's pretty strong bloodlines there, but we, we did look at him, and we knew about him and thought he was a heck of a player in high school. Coach Peterson knows that I have the most respect for him because I've talked to him. I've talked to him a whole bunch. I have the most respect for him. I root for you guys. I really do, except that one time of year. I, I can't stand you guys. I hate the color blue that day. Instead of playing for the Broncos, Carr has spent his collegiate career being tormented by them. I hate losing. I hate, no matter what it is, I, I won't even let my wife beat me at anything. You know, I hate, I hate, I hate losing, you know, but, you know, when they came back to the conference, I was happy. You know, I was happy and I saw the schedule. I was like, yeah, we get, we get another shot at them. Despite never beating Boise State, Carr said Bronco Nation has always treated him with respect. Yeah! You guys' fans are always awesome. You guys' fans are always so nice to me. Your community is always so sweet to me and my to my family. That means the world to me that you guys are always so nice to us. Now that my grandmother remarried, you know, she we got some family in Idaho now. So I, I'm kinda I'm kinda torn now. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now sports with sports director Paul Gerke. I don't know. Yeah we'll see. Will we see Joe Southwick back on the field this weekend? You heard Coach Peterson. We'll see.
The speculation could just be a classic case of Coach Pete gamesmanship. Conventional wisdom does suggest Southwick should be out another couple of weeks rehabilitating his surgically repaired ankle. But Joe returned to practice today, even taking snaps with the Bronco offense. Peterson said Southwick still isn't at full speed, but he's making progress. Southwick has been emphatic about his desire to return as soon as possible. And sooner than later, the Boise State coaching staff is going to have to determine whether he or Grant Hedrick provides the Broncos with the best chance to win. Peterson said there is, quote, no question Southwick will play some role on the field in the coming weeks. Boise State's offense received an unexpected boost from a fresh face Saturday night. Redshirt freshman Devin Demas, number 26 in blue, received his first meaningful carries against Wyoming and did a lot with them. Demas rushed for 73 yards on 13 touches, edging starter Jay Ajayi's performance in both statistics. Coach Peterson said he's had his eye on Devin for a while and thinks he can be a good change of pace complement to Ajayi's hard-nosed style. He seems to have pretty good vision and it's kind of slithery in there and um, has a good burst and so it's good to get him in there on some meaningful reps. He's easy to root for and um, he's been doing a lot of great things in practice over these past weeks for him to get in the game and do what he did. I was really excited for him and really happy so I had a smile on my face. Boise State's search for a reliable second back has been futile since Aaron Baltazar tore his ACL. Ajayi has been the blue and orange Atlas this season, carrying the rock 182 times, rushing for over 1,000 yards and scoring 15 touchdowns, tied for seventh most in the country. Jay says he's pleased but not satisfied. I'd like to believe that I can carry, carry that weight and carry the pressure. Um, just trying to come out each game, just trying to make sure I can do whatever I can to help the team win. In case you're curious, Sajai says he's still sipping pickle juice on the sidelines. He's just, quote, keeping it on the down low now. Last week, Coach Pete said he's not a fan of late starts. ESPN wasn't listening. The four-letter network has slotted Boise State's regular season finale, a home affair against New Mexico, for an 8-15 start. It will be broadcast on ESPN2 and will be the Broncos' third consecutive kickoff of 8 o'clock or later. If BSU wins out, it'll be four straight since the Mountain West Championship is also an 8 p.m. start. Boise State is the highest scoring team in the country. No, not in football, in basketball. My, how times have changed. Leon Rice's offensive juggernaut has already put up 226 points this season, 18 of them courtesy freshman Nick Duncan. According to Rice, Duncan could be the best shooter on the team. Jeff Aloriaga may have something to say about that. He scored 26 points in just 12 minutes against Simpson, finishing 7 for 8 from beyond the arc, the best three-point percentage in school history with at least eight attempts. But even if Jeff is better now, it seems the Broncos have found a suitable replacement that can change the dynamic of the Bronco offense. To have a five man, you know, I, I've said that all along that if you have a five man that can shoot like that and you got the other four that can, and it's, it's sometimes unguardable if they're all making them. I trust that stroke. When you watch that stroke, it's, it's about as legit as you can have. Okay, now you've heard some good things about Nick Duncan. Let's haze the freshman a bit, shall we? What better way to do it than in a side of rice? Well, he was an accountant. He was on his lunch break. And, uh, Looks uh, like Brian Wilson at Beachwood. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's a good one. I think back to guys that I've coached maybe with his body type or that look like him. It was Corey Violet. And Corey came in, and his nickname was Chunk, and he left, and his nickname was Chisel. I probably should be a little more John Wooden old school. and uh, But, you know, he when he came here, he told me that he's always wanted to be like Murph, and, and so that's what that's about. <laughs> I said That's he should great. just grow the, the handlebar mustache. What do you think, huh? Bronco fans love mustaches. Yeah, that seems perfect. Murph, obviously, from the Idaho States. And was he there? Yes, the he was. Today? And he and said, his... you don't want my body. Murph asked if he got it from the Australian <laughs> Y because he wears the T-shirt under his jersey. Murph says he should not be like me. So he's not chiseled then, huh? No. no? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Murph. You're not chiseled, right? You can agree. <laughs> Hope you have your tickets because they may be uh, tough to come by this year. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, not to see Murphy play. We're talking about the Broncos. <laughs> the Broncos. Still, right?